All right, everybody, here I am. I'm back. How you doing? I love you. I've missed you. It's fun to be here. Is it fun to be? Is it's fun to be alive, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a crazy time, isn't it? How are you guys holding up? You feeling good? Feeling strong? Feeling paranoid? Feeling annoyed? Feeling upset? Um, panicky. You got your, hey, have I always said you should have a lot of toilet paper on hand? I've always said it. This is proven to be right. I also always have Clorox wipes, by the way. So I, I wasn't a doomsday prepper, but I have been right about two things. And that's probably all I've been right about in the history of my life. But I did know you should always have a lot of toilet paper on hand. And my God, do I have a lot of it. So anyway, I do hope you guys are doing well. It's a weird time to say the least. Uh, everything's canceled. Life is canceled. So what are you going to do with yourselves while all this shit is canceled? Um, I'm hoping you're find way, finding ways to just cope by putting all good things into your life, all that you can, whether it's just looking at a good art book, taking a walk, um, checking in with your elderly loved ones, uh, you know, whatever it is. I don't even know. For me, I'm a little, you know, I have admitted many times on here that I'm a natural major hypochondriac. Um... But this, for some reason, I'm not a hypochondriac in action right now. And by the way, I have a really good reason for being a hypochondriac, in my opinion. I don't know that I've ever told anybody on this program, whatever the hell this is called, <laughs> this podcast, about this. But um, when I was a kid, I had a best friend named Jessie, a girl, Jessie, and this is in Omaha. And Jessie was just about the most fantastic human being I've ever met still to this day. She was good at everything. She was the smartest kid in our class. She was very athletic, which was why we were very different <laughs> because I wasn't. But she was like better, a better athlete than any of the girls or guys in our grade. And we grew up in a, a small area called Ponca Hills in Omaha. Uh, there were only like 18 kids, maybe 15 to 20 kids in each grade in our elementary school. It was a very ideal way to grow up. It almost felt like we were on Little House on the Prairie or something. Um, and anyway, Jessie was just, she was gorgeous. She had this really cute short hair, like that was not very common for the time period. It was just a very short haircut, almost like um, Audrey Hepburn when her hair was short. And uh, what else? She was sweet. Like all the parents loved her. All the teachers loved her. She was also very artistic. Very, very artistic. Um, just everything good about her. And you know how you have field day towards the end of the year normally in public schools. And so we had field day. And since I had a heart condition, I always sat out on everything like that. Um, and I'll never forget. And Jesse would always win everything. And this... One day, I think we were, it was we were ending either third or fourth, no, fourth grade. We were ending fourth grade, and field day, I'm on the benches on the side, you know, just with some random teachers or teacher's aides, and suddenly, like, Jessie was trying to do a race, and she sat down next to me, and she, I was like, what's wrong? She's like, I don't know, I'm really tired, and my, this area on my elbow hurts, and she kept touching her elbow, and I was like, you know, it was weird that she wasn't able to do it, but I didn't think anything about it, right? And um, then she was, so she sat out all, all during field day, which is her favorite day of the year and all of this. So it was really sad for her, but, you know, I just thought she was sick. Like, kids get sick, no big deal. And then in the summer, uh, she lived up the street from me, so we would always play. But the story was, I guess her mom told my mom, Jessie was unable to play. She's really sick. And so I thought that would only last a while, but that went on all summer long. And it turned out that Jessie, through a lot of testing all summer long, found out she had this extremely rare and very serious fatal disease. And uh, in the meantime, and she just completely changed. Her body changed. She could barely walk. Her skin was like flaking off. Her hair fell out, not from treatments, just from the disease that she had. Um, and she puffed up. She was very thin and athletic and she got not overweight or anything, just like her body puffed up like balloons or something in weird spots. So it was awful. 
And then my family moved when I was in sixth grade, halfway through sixth grade year, I moved to Texas, which I hated at first. Maybe, maybe, maybe always. No, I love Texas, but I was not happy to move from Nebraska to Texas at all. It was a horrible, horrible experience for me. Um, but we were keeping up with Jessie and not, and she was even on the Make-A-Wish list and her dream was to meet David Letterman, which was awesome for a young sixth grade girl. And she got to, in seventh grade, she got to meet, uh, at the beginning of seventh grade or right before it, she got to meet David Letterman and go to the studio and watch him record an episode of the show and all of this. And that was exciting, except I think even though I knew she was sick and my mom was doing a good job telling me about it, I didn't really realize what was going to happen. And, you know, and so not long after that, I came home from school one day and I was already miserable because I hated Texas. I hated my school at this point. And my mom's like, hey, Robbie, come sit down on the couch. I have something to tell you. And she was being really nice. And I didn't think it was going to be anything bad. And she goes, so I got a call from Jesse's mom today. And she then told me, she said, I'm really, I mean, she started to cry. And she said, I'm sorry to tell you that Jesse died. And I just, I can't believe I did this because this is so not me. Not when I was a kid, not now. I, I like leaned over and slapped my mom on the arm really hard and I ran away. And that's only because I, well, I'm not mean. I just, I didn't know at that age how to handle the fact that a, my best friend died. And so, um, anyway, that's basically the end of the story. But the point being is that I think that it got into my head, this thing about, oh, Jesse, Jesse's elbow hurts. And then a couple of years later, she dies. And it, it just fucked me up big time. Not to mention just how devastating it was to lose her and to lose such a vibrant person. I mean, I guarantee she would be fucking running the world if she were still alive. She was just one of those people. You can tell when people are young, you know? Anyway, um, yeah, so I just remember being tired and having her elbow hurt and how minor those things seemed. And then it ended up killing a young, amazing child. So I do think a lot of the times when I think about how much of a hypochondriac I am, I think it has to do with that. That might have been a horrible story to tell while we're in the midst of everything we're in the midst of here with coronavirus, but um, I hope not. Anyway, I just thought I would tell you that story, and uh, I'm sorry I'm not a breath of fresh air here, but hopefully I am in general. I'm just trying to, I don't know how you guys are handling this. I'm sad for everybody with all the cancellations, all the things that are changing. I, I don't know. Again, there's not much any of us can do about it except what we already know to stay healthy. And um, yeah, I don't know. What more can I say? This is all anybody's talking about. I'm here to talk about something. I'm here to talk about Jesse, how great Make-A-Wish is. Uh, by the way, you, you, it would be great to donate to Make-A-Wish. I do believe they're one of the kindest organizations out there. So consider that anyway, you guys. And by the way, I'm still donating all proceeds from t-shirts and sweatshirts on me reading stuff, of me reading stuff, uh, which is on cottonbureau.com. I'll link it in the description. If you buy a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, I'm donating now half of the proceeds to the Trevor Project, which is a helpline for LGBTQ youth in crisis. So that's one of my favorite organizations in the whole world. And I'm still donating a lot of money to them every time I can. So, all right, I wanna thank my friends, Clark and Dina. They gave me this Emily Dickinson poem book. It's called As She Preserved Them. This is a very interesting book. It's not what you're used to. These are, um, they're, they're the copies that Dickinson made for herself. She bound, she kind of bound herself, these books, which she called fascicles. I think fascicle means bundle. And so they're little bundles of poems. And these are versions of poems before they were edited or changed. Or So basically, who knows, she may be mortified to know that we're all looking at them. But they're fascinating to see the process of a poet, obviously. And this book they gave me, Clark and Dina did, and it made me so happy Anytime. By the way, that's something fun to do while you've got time away from everything you're supposed to be doing right now. Surprising somebody with a package in the mail is truly the sweetest thing you can do. Um, I did a couple of these recently, one to my mom, and it 
really made her happy. Funny, funny enough, she sent me something as a surprise too at the same exact time. So that was nice. Care packages, those kind of things. I should do another contest. Uh, I don't know what my contest should be. If you have any ideas, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter and I'll do it. And then I'll make you a care package. I haven't done that in a while, but I would love to. Anyway, the Emily Dickinson poem I want to read is from her fascicle 35. If you get this book, which I'm going to put a link also in the description so you know where you can get it or check it out at your library if it's not already closed. Um, our library in the area I live is, I can't believe they're doing this, but if you can't get to the library right now, uh, they're going to come bring you the books that you want to your door. Uh, that's the benefit of living in a sweet, small community, which, by the way, I'm so happy about. I was all over Europe and also just all over the place. And when I got to come home, I could not wait to be in a slow-paced, easygoing place like the little town I live in. And it, it makes me happy. I will say, and I talked to my dad about this, I'm happier living here than I've ever been in my entire life. And I've lived a lot of places. If I were to detail for you the amount of places I've lived, it's insane. It's well beyond 30s or maybe more than that. And so that's saying a lot. I, I really don't see myself ever leaving. This is great. And so hello, Pacific Northwest. I love you. I don't know what took me so long. <laughs> this is clearly where I'm meant to be. All right, let me move my mic a little bit so I can get to this book. Oh, this book is so huge and heavy. It's over 800 pages. All right, here we go. This again from Fascicle 35, Emily Dickinson. You've seen balloons set, haven't you? So stately they ascend. It is as swans discarded you for duty's diamond. Their liquid feet go softly out upon the sea of blonde. They spurn the air as twere too mean for creatures so renowned. Their ribbons just beyond the eye, they struggle some for breath. And yet the crowd applaud below, they would not encore death. The gilded creature strains and spins, trips frantic in a tree, tears open her imperial veins and tumbles in the sea. The crowd retire with an oath, the dust in streets go down, and clerks in counting rooms observe, t'was only a balloon. I love it. The crowd retire with an oath, the dust in streets go down, and clerks in counting rooms observe, t'was only a balloon. Now, I'm not going to tell you why. Maybe I don't even know why. But I, last night, was going to do the podcast. And I, I must have read, in the span of about an hour, in a lot of the books I have reserved for me reading stuff, 50 poems, and nothing was hitting me. I wanted something to be of the moment, of this time we're all living through together. And nothing hit me. There were poems about death. There were poems about war. There were poems about mass death. There were all these things. There were poems about sickness. But none of them made sense to me for coronavirus time like this one did. So for some reason, you've seen balloons set, haven't you? That's, that's my coronavirus poem. I don't know how, how to explain it or why that is. That just happens to be it. Anyway, I highly recommend this book, and thank you to Dina and her amazing daughter, Clark. Clark is one of the best artists out there, and Clark is very young. Clark is not even yet a teenager, as far as I know. I think she's, I don't know her exact age, 12? Anyway, 11 or 12. So take that, everybody else. She's way better than me. And speaking of me, I don't know, man. I'm back in my studio. I'm doing my best, but I'm very distracted, uh, and I'm very tired. Uh-oh. See, this is what I mean. When I start feeling like, why am I so tired? I've been getting enough sleep. Then I start going down the hypochondria rabbit hole, and I don't need to do it. What I do need to do is keep eating healthy. You know, being in the UK, you guys out there in the UK, you know what I'm talking about. Marks and Spencer. What's up? Marks and Spencer. Sandwiches. Prepared salads. Uh, grapes. You name it. They've got it. It, it saved my life in the UK. Because let's face it, UK. The food. I don't know what's going on there, man. I don't, I don't, have you guys never heard of garlic powder or red pepper flakes or seasoning of any kind? Because it sure doesn't seem like it. But Marks and Spencer has. Marks and Spencer, for those of you who haven't been, 
it, well, first of all, it's a department store, but then they also have food places. Like it's basically like a 7-Eleven. It's really like a Trader Joe's, but the food is way better and it's all local ingredients and they're all insanely good. So I've been really happy because I came home with this recipe that was so simple. This was the salad I liked the most that I would get for lunches. It was a uh, Oh, and it's just as cheap as Trader Joe's or 7-Eleven. It's just all healthy and whole beautiful ingredients. So anyway, it was just quinoa with uh, little chunks of avocado, one hard boiled egg, and it had this mini cute little bottle of soy sauce that came in the little packet. So that's all it was. So I, when I got home, I did my little meal prepping and I've got quinoa. I put a little parsley in my quinoa just because I love parsley. Do you guys know this? I like Here's my favorite foods, pickles, all right, and then french fries, and then parsley. These are my favorite foods. Um, so anyway, a little parsley inside the quinoa, and then I hard boiled a bunch of eggs, and then I have avocados around. And I always, I don't use soy sauce, I use amino acids because they're healthier for you. So if you can get to amino, and they don't have any salt in them, but they taste just as salty as soy sauce. So there's my tip for you guys. Do it, that's my free recipe. I'm going to close this out. First of all, I hope you guys are all doing well. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. Uh, like I just mentioned, feed yourself something delicious or soulful or decadent, whatever it is you need right now. Uh, make lists. Write them down of all the reasons you like being on this planet right now. I'll list a few for you. I love looking at the sky. I love rain. I love cats. I love blankets. I love... Uh, naps and sleep. Uh, what else should you do? Deep clean your sinks. Uh, you know, just do it. It'll be, and clean off your nightstand if it's a mess. That's a reminder to myself. I have about 200 books on my nightstand. They're falling out, falling off the back of it onto the ground. This is ridiculous. Uh, pet a dog, wash your hands, but don't be a maniac about it. And get a good night's sleep tonight, you guys. I love you so much. It's good to be back. Uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.